All right, well, here's a question. What do the hit TV shows Modern Family, Full House, and The Brady Bunch have in common with my guests today? Well, they're all blended families. But sadly, unlike those families that everybody loves to watch on the small screen, Jason and Shady's blended brood is on the brink of falling apart. But before we talk about all that, I want to take you back to the beginning when five years ago, Shady met Jason on a dating site. Now, after knowing each other only two months and meeting in person only once, these two lovebirds thought it would be a really great idea to get married. <laughs> Sadly, these two didn't race into this sacred union alone. Jason has four kids from a previous marriage. Shady has three. And get this, these seven met the first time at the church. <laughs> yeah, they met on their wedding day. Now, of course, with seven children under one roof, there's bound to be some chaos. Normally, well, you don't normally punish you. your kids either, honey. It's not true. My marriage is currently on the verge of falling apart. This is not the life I pictured when I married Shady five years ago. It has been a roller coaster the whole time. Jason is controlling, sneaky, manipulative. He was not the gentleman that I thought that he was. I met Jason on a dating website. When I first saw Jason's profile, I was not attracted to him. He is not my type. He is short, bald. I thought Shady was very beautiful. I did think she was out of my league. I fell in love head over heels quickly. After a month of communicating long distance, we decided to meet in person. Jason and I were married just two months after we met online. Jason was in the military. I moved all three of my children, Avery, Allie, and Wyatt, to where Jason was stationed at the time. I have four kids from my previous marriage. Shay, Hunter, Chloe, and Brinley. I didn't talk to my kids about marrying Shady. My kids met Shady for the first time on our wedding day. I really didn't think about the consequences of marrying a woman with children. I began to feel a little uncertain about our marriage. Jason is like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. He's a very nice gentleman in front of other people. At home, he wants to be in the middle of everything. He yells and screams and cusses. My marriage started to take a turn when I noticed how Shady disciplined her children. Jason was like a drill sergeant. Everything had to be done his way. Okay, Jason, chill out. They were disrespectful. They talked back. They didn't listen to their mom. Jason likes to degrade me in front of our children. We very seldom talk, but when we do, it seems like it always ends in an argument. But you throw in the mix of children and life stresses, it takes the fun out of a relationship. Shady and I tolerate each other right now. I can't continue to live like this. I'm miserable. Well, creating a family with members from previous relationships, I mean, come on, this can be stressful, and the outcome is rarely what you anticipate. Jason and Shady learned about this the hard way. You interrupt me, you get loud, you want to make a scene in front of everybody in the house. Jason is tearing apart our blended family. We have very different parenting styles. What did I tell you? I'm not understanding what you're trying to say. Shady and I never discussed how we were going to parent our children. We never discussed rules for the house. I'm going to be resting. It doesn't matter. Just, just Anytime that I bring up issues with the kids, she'll say that you take care of your kids and I'll take care of my kids. You're not going to punish your kids. Why should I punish mine? I do punish mine. No, you don't. Shady believes that I am too mean, and I believe that Shady is too inconsistent and not fair. Shady is never wrong. Shady is always right. Shady knows all. Jason is always looking for reasons to punish my children, Allie, Avery, and Wyatt. One time, Jason found bubble gum in the bathroom sink, and everyone in our house was grounded for about a week. Jason went on a rampage over the bubble gum. He was storming around the house, screaming and yelling. The smallest thing set him off. I don't get angry for no reason. I notice things. That's who Jason is. I notice everything. I'm attention to detail oriented. I'm the head of the household. I think my word should be the final word. But he does not allow me to say anything to his kids. Whenever I try to reprimand Jason's kids, he tells me to leave them alone and to mind my own damn business. Jason and I got full custody of his four children last year. Um, when my stepchildren moved in with us, Jason's kids treated me like I'm an evil witch. Often I'm ignored, um, even when spoken to or asking a question of one of them, the children will not respond. I was not ready for a blended family at all when I married Shady. Having a blended family is one of the hardest things I've ever done in my life. Oh, okay. So, you met online. Yes. 
a dating site. Yes, we did. Which I think is a great, fine way to meet. Nothing mm -hmm. wrong with that. Right. But you were in different cities. States. states. Yeah, different states. Yes, sir. A thousand miles apart. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. And so you chat each other up <laughs> for yeah. a month or so. Right. Did you talk on the phone, Sam? We no. did. Oh, well. Skype. Yeah. Skype. Skype. Yes, and you met once. Correct. And decided, we need to get married. <laughs> yes. So the second time you saw each other in person mm -hmm. was at the wedding. That's yes. right. Your children met for the first time on your wedding day. Then you move a mother-in-law in. in. Mm -hmm. 10 of you under one roof. What could possibly go wrong <laughs> here? Lots of things. Though. You didn't much cotton to her kids in the beginning, right? Um, I, it's a, you know, well, you meet them for the first time that first day, and they were just seemed like normal kids. She says you hated her kids. Well, that, that, that came in Kentucky. That's when she moved <laughs> to Kentucky. And then we started living as a family. You didn't actually start hating them till Kentucky. Correct. <sighs> you could not make this up. How do you hate children? Um, wow, that's a good question. Thank you. Uh, it, it, I don't know if it was so much that I, I, I did hate them. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. I did not want to be around them because they were smart asses. They didn't listen to their mother. I went from work and I would come home dreading going into that house. What did you say to yourself that allowed you to spend one night under the same roof with someone that declared he hated your children? He didn't actually tell me he hated my children until we had been married about three years. Okay, how did you spend three years and one day under the roof with someone that declared that he hated your children? He wasn't still hating them at this point. He was proclaiming that in the past he had hated them, that he had dreaded. I did not know he was dreading coming oh, home come from on. work. come You gave oh, me an entire list. Mm-hmm of how there is a double standard between the way he treated your children yes, versus is. the way he treated his children. Yes. Your children have told me that he came in and invoked a double standard. His yes. children have rooms. Your children were living in draped areas in the basement. Correct. This only has been in the last year that this has happened. I'm wondering how a mother mm -hmm. allows a man that she just met through the click of a mouse mm -hmm. sells her children down the river to somebody that, that you believe hates them, abuses them, neglects them, treats them with a double standard. I'm not saying that that's true, <laughs> but that's your perception. Right. How is that okay with you? It wasn't okay with me. Apparently it was, because that was three years. We've mm -hmm. now been through three, four, and five, and right. here you still are. The reason I stayed is because at the time, I did not financially have the money to go anywhere else. I had nowhere else to go. Jason works against everything that I do. It is always us against them. It is me against him. My kids on one team, his kids on another team. Feels like it's just a war going on. Jason likes to turn every disagreement into a show in front of the whole family. You want me to refill it? Uh, no. I wouldn't. This is too many. Honey, we're gonna eat this one. I feel like everything is a competition with Jason. Jason always has to have the last word. Shady thinks that she is smarter than me and that she is better than me. Shady's kids think they're better than my kids. My kids don't talk like other people. They don't dress like Shady's kids. Our kids are complete opposites. My children are very social, very outgoing. But that doesn't make Shady's kids better than my kids. I feel like Jason and his kids often see us as the enemy. One time my stepson Hunter told me he and his siblings were the good kids and my children were the bad kids. Jason loves his kids more than he does me or my kids. He always takes their side. He has said, I will never be able to love you or my kids as much as my own blood. I do love Shady's kids, but not as much as I love my own kids. Blood is thicker than water. I've worked very hard to make our family one family unit, all the while having to fight Jason who wants to keep everything separate. Okay, what's got you ready to take issue with so many things? Inconsistency. Uh -huh. uh, being inconsistent, uh, not following through. Those kinds of things just d d drive me nuts. Um, like, for instance, she allowed Avery and Allie. Allie is Shady's youngest daughter, only daughter, who is 15, to stay over the, another girl's house with boys that were seniors. Uh -huh. 
she got mad at my son, Shay, my oldest son, for buying a bag of Doritos and beef jerky. So you think she has a double standard? Uh, yes, yes I do. And you think he has a double standard? Absolutely. And the Doritos and the beef jerky, we have rules. You and I made agreement that Shay would not buy And we hadn't food. followed that for like six months. But you've known that and you've done we nothing hadn't about that. it, which is the problem. You don't ever But you just went off. You didn't even let me do children. anything. You just went off. Uh -huh. You went upstairs You're to right. his room, grabbed the Doritos, you want put them down a toilet. Your children. You didn't you even care if it was going to get clogged. You to punish your own children. You want to put it on me. I didn't put it on you. I said, let me handle it. And what were you going to do about it? Nothing. I was thinking. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> and nothing about inconsistency. I don't think Allie's room has been cleaned one time by Allie. She doesn't have a room. That's well, a good that's, point. Well, that is true. Jason says Shady's 15-year-old daughter Allie is rude and a smart ass who shows him no respect. Take a look. Two, four, six, eight. You really appreciate me. Hey, not Jason. Allie is a smart ass. She does think she knows everything. She's a spitting image of her mom. Jason is the hardest on my daughter, Allie. I have never seen him treat his own children the way he treats Allie. One time, Jason called Allie a bitch, and Allie was only 12. Jason is constantly antagonizing Allie. He baits her. He sets her up for failure so that he can punish her. You had to instigate and try to start a fight. I didn't try to start a fight. Yes, you did, honey. Allie's name is Vivian Allison, and we've always called her Allie from birth. And he said, Vivian. She said, why are you calling me Vivian? Like, yeah, attacking me, questioning an adult. Don't call me Vivian, mom. She doesn't call me Vivian. You are very rude I looked at and him disrespectful. And said, why are you calling me that? Yeah, why would you say that? Because I don't want you to. Then why don't you just say that? She was like, can I call him Patrick? That's his middle name. And I said, yeah, you can. And she goes, Patrick, you know, just to be funny. And it, of course, that made him, made him angry. I couldn't understand why Shady would sit there and laugh with her daughter after she called me Patrick. And Allie's laughing right now. Yeah, and you're just right along with her, Shady. All she said was your middle name. No, it's wrong, honey, and you know it. Like I said, you're better relationship with your daughter than you have with me. Are you getting weary of all this fighting that's going on? Yeah. Were you surprised that they got married so quick? Um, yeah, I was. I didn't really know him. Yeah. At all. So when, when y'all got married, you were living in Texas, right? Yeah. And then you packed up and moved to Kentucky? Yeah. Then you packed up and moved to Virginia? Yeah, we did. And now you have a, a space? Yeah, I have three and a half walls. <laughs> yeah. Three and a half walls? Mm -hmm. uh, and your brother's on the other side of a curtain? He is. Yeah, how's that work? Not great. How do you get along with Jason? Not great. Yeah. How do you think he feels about you? I don't think he likes me. What do you think about that? I do show Allie that I love her. Sometimes. I mean, sometimes we do get in arguments because we butt heads. Allie and I butt heads. We do. Do you get stuck on things sometimes? Yes. Like this cake thing? Yes. There was cake left where? It was downstairs in the basement in uh, our house in Kentucky. Yeah. It was and a plate, cake, and a fork. You still seem a little upset about that. I never, I, I never found out who did it. <laughs> I, I, you know, you I, still want accountability for that cake. Well, it's not just the cake. There was also gum left in the sink. We haven't forgotten about that either. Gum left in the sink. Yes. I want to remind everyone, these two have only been married five years. They met online. A month later, they met in person. The second time they met, they got married. Uh, but that's not all. When times got tough, these two felt like, well, it's over with, so they kind of went outside the marriage. During the lowest point of my marriage with Jason, I rekindled a romantic relationship with one of my exes. When Shady told me that she had had sex with her ex, I was numb. I went to Texas for the holidays. I started making arrangements that I was going to stay there, but then I had to go back and get my things. And when I was back home, we worked things out. I don't trust Jason. I know that Jason has also talked to other women online. One time a random number popped up on my husband's phone and it was a random woman that he had had a relationship with from the internet. 
I suspect that Jason is still having online relationships because he never sleeps, he stays up all night long on the computer. I did talk to other females online during the first part of our marriage. It was a, an addiction. I love the chase. Is there anything else y'all could do to sabotage this <clears throat> thing? So both of you during a break kind of reached out to other people. Yes. I wouldn't call it a break. It was Thanksgiving. <laughs> she went to Texas. I went to Kansas. Did you each think that this was unraveling? Uh, yes. Yes, we did. Yeah. Yep. But you thought you would visit your ex. I did. Yes, I did. And this was a good idea. Why? This was not a good idea. This was a bad idea. But it seemed like a good idea at the time. Mm -hmm. Why? I think that I was just reaching out to what was familiar to me, um, thinking I made a mistake, I picked the wrong man. Did it ever occur to you that, you know what, this might be a really good time for me to not be in a relationship. Maybe this would be a good time for me to focus on me mm -hmm. and my children. That's probably what, where I should have been thinking. That's not what I was thinking at the time, but yes, I see your point. But then you decided, well, no, I'm, I'm gonna go back. I planned to go back, ordered a truck, we were gonna load the house, actually we did. Um, boxed everything up, loaded the whole entire truck, got ready to move, and Jason and I sat down that last night, had conversation. Um, well, that's a novel concept. <laughs> so you actually sat down and talked through some we things. We actually did, yes. <sighs> oh, but I unloaded the truck, then she told me she slept with her ex. So did you load the truck back up? Or I, <laughs> I was, like I said, I was numb. I didn't want to do it again. I didn't want to leave. Well, so I was going to fight. I was going to deal with it. So what do you want to do now? I want to get counseling. Um, I want to become a, a family. What do you think that's going to take? Counseling. Well, but I mean, what do you think? Compromise. Shady and I getting together, actually making set rules, um, you know, everything, you know. Well, you're kind of big on rules. Mm -hmm. I am. In fact, he had you sign a contract. Yes, he did. It was a marriage contract. Well, no, this was boundaries for dealing with conflict. You said, we'll never mention divorce. We'll not bring up old unrelated items. We'll never fight in public or in front of our children. We'll call a timeout if it escalates to a damaging level. We'll never touch each other in a harmful way. We'll never go to bed angry with one another, but that got crossed out somehow. <laughs> Um, failure is not an option. Whatever it takes, we'll work it out. And you both signed it. So this, this was your contract. Um, does he live up to number one? No. He, he doesn't live up to number one? No, he does not. Okay, so he, he doesn't live up to that one. Does he live up to number two? Not at all. No. He doesn't live up to number two? Does he live up to number three? Number three is his favorite. He loves to fight in public. Okay, so mm. he gets a double. Yeah. <laughs> we'll call timeout if it escalates to a damaging level? I've yet to ever seen him call a timeout. Okay, so he doesn't do that. We'll never touch each other in a harmful way? He has never physically hurt me, so he does live up to number five. Okay, so he does live up to number five. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> Failure is not an option. Whatever it takes, we will work this out. I mean, you are here. He's still trying. Yep. Okay. You, you are here. Okay. So, and wh what happened to number six? I, I, that was my suggestion because it's just, that's been impossible. We do go to bed angry at times. We get up the next morning and continue on, but sometimes we can't resolve it before bed, so we just took that one out. Okay, so you just killed that because you did. fight so much, you got to get some sleep. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. We're going over the tour list so you guys know what chores you guys have today. And make sure your rooms are clean, too. So then I have the bathroom and the stuff? Yes, yep. you do. Were you back in the stairs? Yeah. I like a schedule, love schedules. I love to have things where they're supposed to be. 
I love fun, but without the structure, there's no fun. Okay, you had rules for the kids. We both did, it was family rules. She created those. But you created the chart. No, she created I that. I made the chart. You created the chart? I did. Okay, listen, um, I've been to several county fairs and a couple <laughs> of goat ropings and, and I couldn't figure this damn thing out. <laughs> Honest to God, what? Could could y'all figure this out? Y'all y'all couldn't follow. Because listen, seriously, I, I got this at home the other night. I sat down. Robin and I looked at it, and we couldn't figure out what the hell we were supposed to do. Could, y'all couldn't figure this out. No, nope. they just tell us. Uh, I, we had a vision of y'all standing there at the refrigerator. <laughs> did the best I could. <laughs> really? What's, what do you do for a job? Mm, I manage a salon. <laughs> he should have made that contract. And, yeah, well... Every name has a color code, though. <laughs> That's ridiculous. But if they fail, there are consequences. Yes, there is. This took two pages. Okay, so if you don't do these things that you couldn't figure out you were supposed to do then you get confined to your bedroom and or space. Um, <laughs> you, you lose your electronic privileges. You have to write reports. You, you have to do all of these sort of things. So with 10 people, you got to have some organization. You got to have some rules. I understand. Uh, you ever heard the old saying that a fish stinks from the head? No, never heard that. <laughs> What it means is, it all starts with the leadership. Mm -hmm. Chaos begins from the top down. Mm -hmm. Disorganization begins from the top down. Mm -hmm. Disrespect begins from the top down. Everything starts from the top down. And if you look at a situation and it's chaotic, don't you have to look at the leadership? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're a military guy, right? Mm -hmm. Don't you have to look at the leadership? Yes. So, isn't this a top-down problem? Yes. I think so. With seven children under one roof, why not add a mother-in-law? My mother, Shirley, moved in with us to help take care of the kids. My mom would step in when Jason was too rough on my kids and when he was being mentally abusive. Shirley is an alpha, like a man. She wants to be in charge. Jason is paranoid that my mom and I are talking behind his back. Shirley talks behind my back. She jumps in on every issue. It's a Shirley, Shady, and Jason issue, and it's a three-ring circus. Well, Shady and Jason agree that it's been a bumpy ride. They both say, we want this to work. Now, Shady and Jason aren't the only adults in this dysfunctional drama. Shady's mom, Shirley, has lived with them on and off during their marriage. Let's hear what she has to say. My relationship with Jason is very tense. Everybody in the house walks on eggshells. It gets real chaotic at times because everybody is at each other's throats. Jason is very degrading to Shady. He tells her how worthless she is. He has called her a bitch. He does this in front of the children. When they have an argument, he gets louder and louder and louder. It's very obvious he wants his children to understand that she's the bad guy and he's the good guy. I'm not at all surprised that their marriage is in trouble because they didn't know anything about each other. I'm afraid of saying anything because I'm afraid Jason might kick me out again. I'm 69 years old. Right now, I have no place else to go. Well, thank you for joining us. You're welcome. It, it's interesting. We talked to you and we did an interview with you, and then after that, you wrote us a letter. Yes. Why'd you write us a letter after we interviewed you? Because I felt like I was so angry when I was interviewed about some of the things that I had seen, and I wanted to be, I wanted it to be more fair so that I could explain better what I saw from both sides of this picture. Because you wrote a letter that was eight pages long. I don't think it was quite that long, but... You no, know, it was eight it pages was long. long. <laughs> there are 
it is. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Okay. And uh, I, I popped a few things out that I thought were significant that I think you think are significant. Okay. These are just excerpts. As you said, after four and a half years of watching Shady and Jason interact, I'm angry. Angry that anyone could treat others the way he does. Shady told me I didn't have to do anything I didn't want to do. And it hasn't been quite like I pictured it. I took on cleaning, cooking all meals, taking care of the kids. She refuses to do anything except eat and lay on the couch. She goes to the store, gone all day. When I first moved in, she was a complete basket case. So you're saying he's kind of bulling around there and yelling and all of that kind of stuff, but this kind of a bait and switch from her too. What do you think needs to happen in this house? There have been times when I thought there needed to be a divorce and everybody needed to split and completely give it up. But they both want to be married and they both want to stay together. And so I would like to see both of them get some help. What do you want to see happen? The same thing. I want unity in our home. I want my husband to allow me to be a parent. Um, I want him to stop trying to take my authority away. I want him to stop arguing and fighting in front of our children. I just would like us to become one unit. I want him to allow us to be a family. And what do you want to see happen? Consistency. I want us to be a family also, but I want things consistent. Do you get upset playing board games? I'm competitive, Dr. Phil. <laughs> When you're getting upset and pitching a fit over a board game, then you got a bug up your ass. And it has nothing to do with the board game. You brought that with you. I think I'm being misconstrued or, or, or portrayed here because games are fun. Board games are fun. Am I competitive at board games? <clears throat> yes. I want to win. But to they're... the point of screaming and cussing and hitting the table. Yes, so did, so did Yeah, your children did the people. same, I know. Yes, it's our family. It's the way They've we're competitive on best. board games. They've learned from the best. It's board games. <laughs> did you all, fun. Did you all have one of these let's not go to bed angry nights and you decided to sleep on the couch? We, yes, yes, we have she recently. Slept on the couch. I've slept on the couch before. And you wouldn't give her a pillow or covers? He came in there, grabbed the pillow, the blanket, took them in our bedroom and locked the door. Don't remember that, Left Dr. Me on Dr. The Phil, couch. but if she says I did it, I might have done that. But she exaggerates a lot. Do you always tell the truth? Well, no. Of course not. <laughs> Who does? But I don't exaggerate. You don't exaggerate? No, I might lie, but I don't exaggerate. <laughs> Can I make this situation better? Well, hell, you can't fall off the floor. <laughs> I don't see Jason as a father figure at all. I kind of see him just like mom's husband. I just see him as there to like be with my mom. Life at home is very chaotic. Most of the time it's really stressful. Jason was screaming at my mom. And he would tell her like, shut up. I was surprised that my mom married Jason because he blamed everything on us and like we didn't really like that. I was shocked because he never talked to us about her before. I thought Shady was nice when I first met her. I see my dad and Shady arguing. Sometimes I get upset when he yells. It feels uncomfortable when they argue. Jason treats us differently than he treats his own kids. We found out they were actually like moving in to stay. It was like, automatically Jason was like, my kids are not moving into open spaces with no doors. Me and Wyatt had to move out of our bedrooms into the base. My bedroom's right here, and then not even a whole foot is wide. If I want privacy, then I have to like close them completely, which is really difficult to get them like to completely close. It's so annoying when Jason argues with me over petty things. The day they got married, we were gonna go out to eat afterwards. They even got an argument that day. My mom wanted to go eat Mexican food and he was like, no, me and my kids don't like Mexican food. He got like really upset about it for no reason. I think I'd be relieved if mom and Jason split up. Okay. Um... Guys, if this situation could work, would you prefer that it work or would you prefer that it not? If she would like it to work and that's like what she wants, then I want the best for her. So if she wants it to work, then they should make it work. Okay. And Allie, what's your thought? Um, 
I don't, I mean, like Avery said, if mom wants it to work, then I would like it to work out. But at this point, I don't think it's going to. Okay, do you guys have an opinion? Uh, I would like it to work. Yeah, and you're? I'm Shay. Uh-huh. Do you have an opinion? Uh, I want it to work, so same thing that you said, very much. You gotta be really willing to do something different. And what you need to do to begin with is some premarital counseling. Mm -hmm. Children of divorce and children in, in, in blended families have the needs of acceptance. They need to know that they have acceptance from both of the parents. They have to have assurance of safety, mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually. They gotta have freedom for guilt or blame. They gotta know this isn't my fault. Hearing you fighting or money problems, but they gotta know it's not their fault. They gotta have some structure. They gotta have a stable parent that has the strength to conduct the business of the family and they have to be allowed to be children. Kids are gonna be kids. They're not soldiers. Yes, sir. Very true. <laughs> yeah. I don't ask myself why this is failing. I ask myself why not? How could there be any other possible outcome? If, if you want this to work, then you've got to do the work necessary to give it a chance. And you have done none of that. You, you've done none of that. You said our children are opposite in personality, our parenting styles are opposite in personality, and both of you fight for those parenting philosophies and defend them, and neither one of you are within a country mile of what is a healthy parenting style. You fight to defend yours, you're wrong. You fight to defend yours, you are wrong. Well, I am back with what masquerades as a blended family. I say masquerades because this family isn't blended. We've got two warring camps under one roof and it's because we have two strangers that are married. We have two strangers that are married. You know, get a driver's license, you have to take a test. Get a marriage license, you, do you even need a license anymore? <laughs> You, know, you pay two bucks? What did you pay, two bucks? Is it what it costs, two bucks? Yeah, but if you're in the military, you can get it fast. <laughs> yeah, 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 good. Let's discount that. Let's, let's fast track this. Look, guys, if, if, you, if you want this to work, you, you've got to be willing to put the effort in. And you, you have to understand one thing for absolute drop dead certain. You cannot discipline her children. Okay. You cannot discipline his children. You are not their mother, you are not their father. You are a man she married, you are a woman he married. If you were going to be in a father role for these children, you would have need to been in there before five years of age. Okay. You aren't, you weren't, so you can't do that. You can support her in disciplining her children and you can support him in disciplining his. Mm -hmm. This double standard, come on. This is why you have to sit down and negotiate. There are rules for the children. There are standards for the children. And children are different, they have different currencies, but there has to, children have to know that they are all love the same and they are all treated the same. I'm very serious when I say you need to go through premarital counseling. You need to sit down and say, let's design a family. Let's design a family that we actually begin to create some traditions. We actually begin to do some things where the children want to be part of this. And I will arrange that for you. That would be great. Thank you. And every day that you have this woman in your lives is a blessing. Let her know she's loved and appreciated here, right? She deserves that, she needs that, and she's earned that. If I do this, if I set this up for y'all, will you really immerse yourself in this? It will be the greatest gift you can give all of your children. What a role model you can be for these children. To I say, you know what, that. it came late, mm -hmm. but we decided to learn and do this right. Mm -hmm. Fair enough? Fair enough. Yep. Okay.
Do you have a story or a question for me? Click the link in the description and tell me what in the world is going on.